Hi guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from mytestedasp.net. A little bit about me, I have been working for the last couple of years as a CTO in a large software development team. I have also been a technical trainer for more than like 6 years now. And in my free time I tend to write quite a lot of code. I create open source libraries, mainly for the ASP.NET framework. I have libraries for the old ASP.NET Web API and for the new ASP.NET Core. Most of my projects actually allow you to assert and test the ASP.NET Core components in a quite easy manner if we take a look. It's a fluent API to allow you to assert various parts of your controllers, services, routes and more. Initially, when I started developing this project, I thought eh, it will be easy, it will, <laughs> it will be like two to three months and it will be ready, but this project alone has been developed for three or four years and it has a lot of complexity involved because I had to read the ASP.NET core source code quite a lot of times to learn how to for example, test specific parts of the framework. I saw quite a lot of useful techniques uh, with the C-Sharp framework uh, the ASP.NET Core team uses and I decided to implement it in my own projects. For example, uh, one kind of technique is making reflection fast and this video is going about that. Recently I decided to start video series about my developing experience. Hopefully that I will share my knowledge of the C-sharp language and hopefully you will learn something. Let me give you a little bit of context about what is the problem here. The problem here is that in the new in the new ASP.NET Core framework, we can define controllers like this without inheriting the base controller class, which is kind of fine. But if you want to uh, get, for example, the view data, we can declare it like this. And the ASP.NET Core framework will recognize this property as the view data dictionary and will inject it here. I wondered how this works, so I took a look into the controller class and noticed that if you decorate your property with this attribute view data dictionary, the ASP.NET framework will recognize it. So what this has to do behind the scenes is to find all properties of this class, find the one that is decorated with this attribute and inject the data here. Okay, but that seemed kind of slow because as you as we all know reflection is not the fastest way to execute code so i decided to take a look around and implement the same thing in my projects because with say in my test my controller calling this action blah 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 should have temp data contain, containing entry with key okay if my controller is inheriting the controller class I can easily get the temp data how I can I can cast the user controller to the base controller class and get the temp, da temp data directly by the property they provide. 
this one. Sure, but how to do it if this plain object controller does not implement the base class? I had to scan all properties, I had to search for a property which is of type temp data dictionary and I had to inject the data there and test it because that's what my projects are all about. Sure, but that's also kind of slow because if a, if a user of my library has, for example, 1000 tests and in these 1000 tests he calls the temp data, that will be quite slower than the actual sp.net core framework. And I took a look around their code and find an interesting technique which allows you to make reflection code a lot faster. Like maybe you won't have any overhead on the reflection code when you try to invoke a property getter or when you try to invoke a, for example, normal method. Let me first define some classes. For example, uh, data attribute. I will replicate their scenario and my scenario in the test project. And we will try and diagnose how to make the reflection faster. We have some property, a dictionary, a string, and object, which will be data. I will decorate this property with this attribute and what I will try to accomplish here is I have to get this dictionary by finding it by the attribute the same way the ASP.NET Core team does with the view data dictionary and then I will show you the delegate technique to make that reflection code faster. This delegate technique works on property getters, property setters, indexers, methods, whatever you like. So if you happen to be in a situation in which you invoke some methods with reflection and if that invocation is part of your hot path, I mean a lot of users hit that code, hit that reflection code, you can cache it with delegate and use it. And that will make your code run 10 times even more faster. So what I want to do here is I want to put some dummy data. Dictionary. And I will try to get that data. Remember, the idea is not to call var home controller, new home controller, then to call home controller touchcut data because that's that property is available only when I have this type available at compile time. But if we look from the ASP.NET Core Frameworks point of view, they don't know that your controller is going to be home controller or articles controller or cats controller or whatever controller. So they have to write a code something like get a controller assembly, get all types which name ends with controller and these types 
these types have the temp data property and they will inject it. They will inject the view data property and so on. So they don't know the controller type at compile time, so they have to use reflection to get all that properties. Also, in my framework, I don't know what the user controller is. It may be called data controller, it may be called gets controller, I don't know. So if I want to get the temp data or view data or whatever property I need from their classes, I have to use reflection. And to make reflection fast, I will use delegates. So, get all types, which name ends with controller. So, for some, somehow, I have the, the controller instance and I have the controller type. If you argue that I'm instantiating and constructing the home controller here, we can make it with activator create instance to make sure that we are using reflection for all of that, but that's not the point here. Okay, the what I have to do now is to get the property. I have to say home control type, get property and provide the name, but I don't have a name. I don't know how the user decided to name that property. It may be data, it may be cats, not sure. So I will search for that attribute. So I will get all properties and then I will call give me first or default that property which is defined with data attribute. Cool. That property is defined with data attribute and from here, if I want to execute it with normal reflection, I can do var get method is property get method. And then I can do get method dot invoke. And if I have the controller instance and pass it here, and since it's a getter, it doesn't have any parameters. I will get the dictionary and if I write console write line dictionary with a name and run it, that should work. It will not work because invoke returns an object, so I would have to cast it. Dictionary string to object. Because I know that the date dictionary is I dictionary, so that's okay. I will cast it and I will invoke it. Okay, it works. Using reflection works, it's fine, but what happens if I have to do that 10,000 times? For example, the ASP.NET controller is invoked on each request. On each request, the temp data dictionary is, um, is instantiated the view data dictionary too. So if I have 10,000 executions of this invoke method, I will have the following performance using system diagnostics. Let's make it like that. For 100 times, get the dictionary and let's measure it. I will have a stopwatch start new I will have a stopwatch Console right one stop watch dot elapsed. That's it. Okay, that's quite fast. It's not a lot, but still 
let's see how to create a delegate and see how that uh, improves our performance to create a delegate all, all set methods get methods from reflection even even the method info which is the normal method from the classes have create delegate method and the only thing I need here is to provide the delegate type delegate type if I examine the getter of this controller of this property the data property I will see that the delegate gets a home controller class and returns an i dictionary so if my my delegate type is home controller i dictionary string object i'm writing wrong code i have to provide type of func because funks are delegates home controller i dictionary string object and that's it this will essentially create the same thing as writing down home controller i dictionary not from string object equals controller controller dot date essentially I'm trying to create the same func the same delegate but since I don't have the home controller I don't I don't know the property data I have to create it runtime which is done by this create delegate method the create delegate method as I said exists everywhere so if I have a method for example type of program get method so method create delegate I can create delegates from almost everything in reflection even from constructors so creating delegate is done by recognizing the type parameters of the func which is essentially home controller and i dictionary so this is the type in which the property is declared home controller and this is the type which the property returns so let's test that and let's see when i restart the stopwatch here stopwatch equals stopwatch start new and if I decide to get the dictionary by the delegate here and say mm, delegate invoke it with home controller the stupid thing here is that it doesn't recognize the type the type is of type delegate so I has I have to cast it before I use it yeah it's quite ugly but this is how reflection code usually looks like so when I cast that delegate to func from home controller and i dictionary string object I can invoke it and the last thing I want to do is to print the stopwatch elapsed I can see that it's quite a lot faster it's very fast because once you create the delegate the delegate is uh, its performance is exactly the same as invoking a normal function 
while the invoke method here is not like in a normal function. The invoke method here has to uh, has to make some additional checks to validate that this home controller has that method. That method can be invoked without the parameters and to cast the return type. Here we do the heavy lifting once and then invoke the delegate every time we like. And if we, if we cache this delegate, we will use it like we call the normal data property. So essentially the slow part of the process using reflection is the invoke method. It, ha it has to check whether this invocation is valid. And the slow part of the delegates is only, the, only to create the delegate. Once we create the delegate we can use it as much as we like and it will be fast. So the only slow thing is in delegates is invoked once and with reflection is invoked every time we invoke it. This is why we receive such a performance improvement by using the delegate. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to show you is if I want to make a delegate creator because that code is quite ugly to be written every time I need to delegate. It's not... it's long, it has an ugly type of, it has an ugly cast. We can extract it to a property helper class which will help us. This property helper class for now, for now, let's create it generic and it will get the class on which, on which uh, we are trying to invoke some property. This property helper will have Method make fast property. Yeah, static is okay. Make fast property getter. And we will make the delegate here and return it in order to be used a bit easily. So we need a property info, which is essentially a class which reflection returns, and we have to create the delegate. So what I have to do var get method is property get method. get method, then I have to create the delegate which is get method create delegate type of func the class the result and cast that result because create delegate returns a normal delegate var result and return result. I will I will make it make the name deleg and essentially it will become a bit easier to create such delegates property helper from home controller dot make fast property getter from i dictionary string to object and I have to provide 
the property here. That's great and it should work. But as I said earlier, and this is getting advanced here, most of the time when you are using reflection and when you have properties or methods and want to create delegates, most of the time you will know the type. You will know it and it will be easier for you to create a delegate. That's enough. You will create, a, for example, property helper class, which is generic and gets the class. One method to create a delegate and you can use it everywhere you like. Also, you can try to cache that delegate. You can cache it in some sort of dictionary, private read-only dictionary from string, which is essentially the property name, to delegate. Something like that. Cache. And you may make that concurrent dictionary or a normal dictionary, it doesn't matter. And you can cache it. You can cache it by the oh yeah, I have to use the interface. Um and you can cache it like this if static if cache contains key property name return cache from property name but before that you have to cast it else Cash dot add property name is delegate. So that will make the same call to this property helper class even faster because you essentially cache the create creation of delegates. The creation of delegates is the only slow thing and is using reflection. Is the only slow thing in this code, so it's good to have it cached. Mm, why it's slow? Because it validates whether this get method can be converted to this uh, delegate. And for example, if we create create delegate type of func object the result, if I run it. I will hit an exception, cannot bind to the target method because its signature is not compatible with that of the delegate type. Uh, a bit of bad exception, but that means that the, the delegate for this property is home controller to iDictionary. And I'm trying to create a delegate of object to iDictionary so the delegate is different because the delegate is not from home controller and it's for object and that's not working. Okay. Let's remove the cache because we are not going to need it. You, you, you may add it if you need it or if you happen to call this property helper a lot of times then it may be a cool idea to cache it. For example, the sp.net team uses the same, exactly the same technique. The name of the class is the same. They're creating delegates, make fast property getter, 
is that familiar? <laughs> Uh, they're creating the same thing, but it's a bit more advanced, so if you don't understand what's following, it's okay. This technique is enough if you happen to use reflection in your code to make it faster, but let me show you how the ASP.NET Core team fix the issue that they don't know the class of the controller so essentially they can't type property helper home controller because home controller is not in their code it's in the web application code the code which the developer writes so let's try to make that work and see why it, <laughs> it won't work I will create a property helper without a generic argument which means that property helper will no longer allow me to use the tech class so I have to use object because essentially all controllers are objects and I can write something like this private read only type And now I have to try to create a delegate that is from this type or Actually, I don't need that. I can get the type of the property from the from the property itself. So, declaring class, which is essentially the home controller, but since we cannot access it here, we can get it from the property dot declaring type. See, if I run the code, I can see the declaring type is home controller, exactly what I need. And I can, I can try to create a func of object, the result, and use that. Seems a good idea, but as we saw earlier, the delegate types do not match, which is kind of bad. So let's try to create a delegate by using reflection and using this type we got from the property. So I'm going to create generic delegate, I'll get method delegate, type of func without any arguments and make generic type with declaring class and the result what this does is this will create a func type of func which the first argument is home controller and the second argument is the result. Essentially, this is the same as writing directly func of controller the result controller type. But since I don't know the controller type compile time, I have to create it manually by using this. Uh, not very fun, but it works. Okay, then I may try to create a delegate from to, to I may try to cast this delegate to this one for example. So 
what I can do is try to do this and <coughs> instead of writing func of object terrazo directly I will create it manually and pass it to the create delegate function that won't work because the cast is invalid now if we if we remove the cast or just move it here this is the type of the delegate from the controller type the result this is the created delegate essentially this creates a delegate like this that's the idea of the create delegate method here okay that's cool but if I run it I can see that the method actually works and creates a delegate for the property if we analyze we can see that the property is get data which is exactly what I needed so this works the problem here is that Get method delegate cannot be casted to func of object the result because uh, the type of the delegate is controller type the result and not object the result. So this essentially fails. Unable to cast. We can we can be a little bit of abstract here. That's not the whole idea, but if I return the get method delegate here, I can use it. I can still use it, but the usage is with delegate dynamic invoke. And dynamic invoke is not fast. Dynamic invoke makes the same checks the reflection makes. So essentially, I didn't accomplish nothing if I decided to use the abstract delegate here. Okay, I can invoke it to show you that it works. It's even slower than reflection. Congratulations, Ivo, you did it. Okay, so dynamic invoke is not the answer. Although every delegate can be invoked dynamically if uh, the parameters match it will run but it's quite slow it's it's not something I would recommend uh, except you have no other choice I have been using dynamic invoke here and there because I had no other choice but if you had a choice if you have a choice do it better and let's make it better to make it better things will get a little bit weird. Let me create a method which will be a wrapper method for this method we are using for the property. Um, private static private static funk of object the result because essentially that's the uh, the delegate we want to get from here from this uh, I don't know what to name this how to name this Call delegate and things are a bit weird because this code delegate will have tech class the result and it will receive the tech class and the result delegate and essentially the method will return I have an error here essentially we will return controller but I will make it 
class or type or whatever. So what I did here is I created a method which has a tech class and the result gets the func and invokes it by casting the object to the class. So I'm creating a wrapper method to invoke that method and I know it's weird. It will get weirder, don't worry. I'll write that in a simple syntax. Okay. Um, next thing I have to do is essentially I have to pass that method c goes to c dot data into this call delegate called inner delegate. Unfortunately, the class is unknown. I don't know it because if it was known, the whole object here is uh, won't be useful, won't be needed. So what uh, what to do here is we're going to get that method with reflection. We're going to create a generic method. We're going to construct it by using the declaring class here and using the ter result here. And we're going to invoke it by reflection. And when we're going to invoke it, it will return this delegate and I can use it to return it here. Yeah, I know. It, it gets weird, but that's how they do it. That's how your ASP.NET Core application works. And that's in production code. And that's in the ASP.NET Core team. So it's weird, but it makes the reflection calls very fast. So the code may be weird, but it works. And it's good to know that technique because usually you won't need it a lot. You maybe need it like one or two times in a year, I don't know. But when you need it, you will know that you can create delegates and you will know that they are fast. And you won't be that afraid to use reflection when it comes to performance. So let's create a private static read only method info go in our delegate method this equals type of property helper dot get method name of call inner delegate get declared get method with binding flux dot non public and binding flux static to to make sure the reflection get method calls it. Why I did this in a private static read only because I can I can write it here, but why do I have to? First of all, this re this reflection is adding overhead. This reflection is adding overhead of the get method. And why call the get method every time when the method is not changing? We can cache it. We can call it only once and then have it here in this in this field that that's how we optimize this reflection call the sp.net core team is using exactly the same technique then type of result is going to be cache in a variable um, 
I suggest every time you use reflection, every time you call type of get method, and if every time this method does not change, you cache it. Or if this type is used more than once, don't call type of five times. Cache it in a variable. It's faster. It's better. And the code is more readable. Okay, so essentially what I have to do is I have to create this delegate with the declaring class and the result. So call inner delegate method tochka make generic type. Again, declaring type, declaring class and type of result. So what I did here is I created a method, constructed a generic method with this signature. This is what I did. I created this. And the last thing I have to do is invoke that inner that method with the delegate from above, this delegate, because this delegate is essentially from the same type here. This and this are the same type. So I can call it and that will return a wrapper func which returns object and the result exactly the thing I need. So var result equals call inner delegate types invoke the method is static so I will pass no and for a parameter I have to pass this get method delegate because it's of the same type. So this returns, this invokes this constructed generic method and returns the func I need. And the last thing I have to do is return result. This can be cached. This is for sure this should be cached. My dictionary string func delegate cache but before we cache it let's see whether it works it may fail but what's that dynamic invoke? That dynamic invoke shouldn't be here. So essentially the delegate is the delegate is func object of dictionary. So I can pass now the home controller directly without using dynamic invoke. And that's fast again. So what we did was create a delegate from a property in a type which is not known during compile time. Exactly how the ASP.NET Core team did it for their controllers and how I did it for my testing library. Cool. Mm. Let me make a summary before we cache it. We get a property and want to make a func object the result where the result is the return type of the property. Then uh, when we don't know the declaring type of the property, we cannot create func of object directly. So we have to first create the normal func, which is the was type the result by using this code. Then we create a delegate, which is essentially 
this code. Then we write down an inner method to function, function as a wrapper around our other delegate. So we have func object the result which gets the other generic delegate and invokes it by casting the instance to the class. So we get that method with reflection then we make generic method to match the controller type and then invoke it with reflection. That essentially creates the delegate we need. And then I can use it however I like and it's 10 times faster than invoking directly the property. Uh -huh. Let's cache the delegate because I don't like this invocation. It, it, it will be better if it's cached. So if cache contains key property dot name return cache from property dot name and when it does not exist in the cache we will create it and then we will cache the result. You can write it with concurrent dictionaries cache get oh, at what was oh sorry it's not in the interface this method get or add what's the signature again key property dot name key and we can hit it like this and can even make that method on a single line. So we said get or add the property name. If you find it, return it and cast it to this func. If you don't find it, execute this logic and cache it then. Cool. This works as I said, this technique works as I said with properties, with methods, with setters, with uh, indexers, a lot of stuff. The, the whole difference is that instead of property info you will have method info and you will have to have uh, an array of objects with arguments. And the same technique can be found here. I will leave a link in the description. This technique is the same, making reflection fly and exploring delegates. They, uh, you will learn if you read this article about the difference between the open and closed delegates. And you will learn how to do this with methods, not with properties. With properties it's easier because properties don't have arguments and don't have parameter list. With methods, it's the same technique as we can see. We create delegates and cast them to func. It's the same technique, and we invoke a method with reflection to construct a generic types. 
Okay, so I will, link, I will leave a link to this description. If you really liked this video, hit the thumbs up. You can check the original property helper class, which was inspired, which was quite inspiring and quite difficult to understand initially. My property helper is a bit essentially the same technique but with some exception handling and I have property setters too here and you can take a look uh, the property helper class too I believe it's in abstraction, abstractions package internal namespace property helper I will give a link to this too so if you like the video I will be very thankful if you comment if you share it with a friend if you take a look at my projects give a star or two fork it play around with it test something with it um, subscribe to this channel everything will be great I will be more than happy and I'm currently looking for sponsors and backers for this channel and for this project so if you really like my work consider supporting me on patreon some people already did on uh, on open collective around eight people i think so whatever fits your situation a simple star or simple like it will be appreciated. Thank you very much for being with me and hopefully you learned how to make reflection code not so scary because you can cache it and you can create delegates 